Ladies and gentlemen, I must confess that I am not really a doctor, but I'm going to do a bit of doctoring during this speech because uh, the subject that I've been given is how genetically modified crops are affecting the environment, the kind of hazards that are being created. It almost feels like I'm back to school or maybe first year college. And in those days, whenever one had to really talk about a proposition, one was told by a very famous debater called Mr. Shudang Shudash Gupto, a great friend of my own father, Professor N. Vishwanathan, that uh, in Grecian times, in Hellenic times, there was a system when a bill was to be proposed the speaker was placed on a platform and uh, a rope would be placed round his neck. If he succeeded in convincing the audience and the bill was passed, the rope would be removed. If not, the platform would be removed. I find myself in much the same situation because the subject is so difficult. We are living in a world where scientific progress cannot be denied. I myself belong to a background in mathematics. And therefore, I give the highest value to science, scientific progress, and research. However, it is very important to realize that small is beautiful, Doing more does not necessarily mean doing good. And the old adage, the old American adage, that if it is working, then don't fix it, is not quite correct. Now let's look at genetically modified crops. Now what is a genetically modified crop? It's a kind of crop where genes are transferred artificially from one organism to another. And this could be from the same species or from the same genus. There are different kinds of varieties of this modification or genetic engineering. It is my proposition today to say that on the whole, on the whole meaning, there could be pluses and minuses. Genetically modified crops are a hazard to the environment. Now, why? I'll quickly give you what I've researched. Firstly, they are unhealthy, and studies, research, sampling has proved that they could cause, they could cause un, uh, unhealthy situations where you become infertile, and it could also cause gastrointestinal disorders. Second, they contaminate permanently, you know, because once you transfer the genes, it's not possible to wash it down with water. The footprint is laid. They contaminate permanently. They have several side effects, and uh, these side effects are, again, permanent. You can't get rid of them. Because these genetically modified crops are resistant to pests, you will find that the pesticides don't affect the crops. That is the, you know, proposition. So the use of pesticides increases, which is not a good thing. The government has been strangely lax in its laws. They are resistant to labeling, so that there's a mystery attached to these genetically modified crops. And even those scientists who are working in this area are not entirely sure about what they're doing. They claim that the yields are higher. Now, this reminds me of a story, you know. There was once a survey done to determine which alcoholic drink was the most potent. And a group of inspectors took vodka and water and got drunk. The next day, they took rum and water 
and got drunk. And on the third day, they took whiskey and water and got drunk. They came to the conclusion that it was the water that made them drunk. The logic is the science of tobacco logic that they're using. Ladies and gentlemen, you can fool some of the people all the time. You can fool all the people some of the time. And that is enough time to become the Prime Minister of India. Remember that. So, genetically modified crops is an interference with nature. Interfering with the natural cycle. Because the heritage seeds no longer remain. Biodiversity is affected. And this, on a philosophic level, in terms of the larger picture, when we look at this process of genetic engineering as being symbolic of something else, is an interference. And as I said at the very beginning, up to a point, something might be very salutary. But science also teaches us that there is a word called optimum. There are certain things that you can do, but if you overdo it, you interfere and cause irreparable damage, which is what genetically modified crops are doing. They're causing allergies to erupt because, for example, if you make a transfer which combines a gene with the gene from a Brazilian nut, you might get lots of people who are allergic to nuts, and you know, biologists know, people of medicine know that the allergy to nuts is very, very large and high. Second, toxicity is increased. Levels of toxicity increase as you, you know, um, interfere with the natural cycle. And most of all, what is most alarming is the fact that if you survive and um, subsist on GM crops, you might become resistance, resistant to antibiotics. How does this happen? Actually, the process of uh, genetic modification is in several parts, and one of them is that when you experiment, you find that not all the cells are responsive. There are a large number of cells which are responsive, and some cells are not to this transfer. So how do you find out? You introduce a gene which is resistant to antibiotic, and then you find that so many cells are resistant. You take all those cells and you work on them, but the gene which is resistant to antibiotics remains. So that causes, let's say, resistance to a virus like Pseudomonas, which is very, very dangerous. I'd like to conclude by saying that there are certain things that we do, we formulate rules. It is not often that these rules fail, but sometimes the rules look very nice when they're framed, but in actual practice, the result might be opposite. Uh, practitioners of medicine would know the name of Dr. Benjamin Spock, who was a pediatrician, a famous child specialist. He had six theories about bringing up children. And then he had six children and no theories. The point he made was he was very much against corporal punishment. He didn't want to beat up children at any point of time. Now one day, he was repairing his house. And he had piled up some cement in front of the house. And the street urchins, the little children, they messed up the cement. So naturally, Dr. Spock was annoyed. And he told the children in his own very calm way, children, please don't mess up the cement. There for some work. I'm, I'm doing some repairs to my house. But the children didn't listen. They messed up the cement again. Now, Dr. Spock was gradually losing it. And he told them, he remonstrated with them, children, please don't mess up the cement. But the children didn't listen. They messed up the cement yet again. Now, Dr. Spock completely lost it. He started picking up the children and beating them up. When he was actually beating up the children, a neighbor happened to pass. The neighbor said, but Dr. Spock, I thought you didn't believe in corporal punishment. 
And Dr. Spock said, my ideas hold in the abstract, but not in the concrete. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that is what is happening today. We are living in a world where we're being dictated by other people. And I'm sorry to say that that science, which has given us so much, which has brought up to the pinnacle of glory and of progress, is often a danger. Are we not dictated by the mobile today? Think of how much time is taken up by Facebook and WhatsApp and Google. Time which you could have given to your children, to your friends, to your loved ones. Now, if you don't have the phone, you feel insecure. Think of how much time is spent when people constantly phone you. And if you don't phone back, they get mad at you. So a whole new etiquette is being formed, a whole new language, a new counterculture through WhatsApp. All this was not there when there was just the landline. And because of the mobile and the computer and other applications, the world is also becoming a very difficult place to live in. You all know that because there's constant mobile networks, the water in coconuts has disappeared. The coconuts are no longer the same again. Man considers himself to be the center of the universe. We live in an anthropometric world. This is the problem. Let us desist from that. Yes, continue with research. Continue to work in the field of genetic modification. Do the research, but see that it has a salutary result. In fact, talking of research, all this is also linked to corporate bodies which actually employ the scientists. And any kind of independent research which tries to point out flaws in the GM crops is suppressed and even violence is resorted to. That is what is most shocking. I'd like to conclude by saying that there was a man in the time of Adolf Hitler called Mr. Mengele. And he did a lot of work in genetic research. He was not caught, actually. He was not apprehended. He escaped to South America, where he was working on a ploy to actually create clones of Adolf Hitler. Think of such a world, ladies and gentlemen. See a field and see a film called The Boys from Brazil, which talks about Mengele. I don't want to be an apocalyptic philosopher and talk about unhealthy things and sound the bell of doom. The very fact that we are debating on this, talking about this, the fact that this selection has been done, I'm thankful to TEDx and to Newtown, proves that we are aware, that we are allowing that amount of dissent. The right to dissent is very important. I may not be wholly correct in what I'm saying, but I have the right to voice my opinion. Give importance to the individual voice, the voice which defers, which demurs, that's very important. And let us not be very, very sure of what we are doing. In a sense, Hamlet is the story of a man who could not make up his mind. In a sense, it's important to vacillate, as Hamlet said, to be or not to be. That is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune or to take arms against a sea of troubles and by opposing end them, to die, to sleep no more, and by a sleep to say we end the heartache and the thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to, it is a consummation devoutly to be wished, to die, to sleep, to sleep. Perchance to dream, aye, there's the rub. For in that sleep of death, what dreams may come when we have shuffled off this no normal coil must give us pause. Thank you very much.